Hi there, welcome to another edition of EMG's Talk About. We're on our beautiful new set based on viewer feedback. Thank you for that. I'm here with Damien Navarro as always. Welcome. What's up guys, thanks. And today we're gonna to be talking about EMG's consulting services. Yeah. Is that correct? We are, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, well What's I- the plan? Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm gonna throw you a, a curveball and talk about something different. Oh, great. Um, we've been evolving as a company for the most part, for, you know, ever since the inception of EMG, but sure. for the most part for the last few years, can you, Elaborate on that? Yeah, I mean, as far as it relates to consulting, I think um, this idea of late in the game comes up a lot at EMG that a few years ago, really since the inception, we were doing a lot of projects and working within the relationships of clients much later in the game, meaning they already had a pretty clear understanding of the type of project that they wanted to do or the type of marketing strategy or the audience that they were trying to attain. Um, and the challenge was is that it was really hard to get total buy-in from us because it was so far down the line that our influence was really limited about the type of performance that we were going to see. And as it, things have kind of evolved, and especially many of the industries we serve, uh, people are wanting to see you much more invested into the overall outcome. So you hear things a lot about return on investment um, and how important it is to make the money back that they're investing in some of the larger scale projects that we're doing. And so that idea of late in the game really had to transition somehow so that we weren't being put into situations that we really didn't have ultimate control over. Right, right. Now this gives us ultimate control and it takes us away from a project-based relationship with clients to more of a strategic partnership, if you will. Sure. So a lot of the idea behind initially creating the strategic consulting division was to get a stronger relationship right from the beginning with the client that we could really influence. So the polar opposite of the relationship we were seeing before. And that's done in a number of ways. Um, you know, the RFP process in many ways has been very helpful and successful at being able to delineate a number of vendors down to a few that could perform a certain project. But what we were really looking to do is to get even before the RFP. And what's happened is that we're trying to build these relationships and trying to provide these services that allow us to help many of our clients answer some of the toughest challenges out there and they've really been categorized into three different areas. Uh, those are business challenges, marketing challenges, and technology challenges. As we know, EMG has a long history of doing some pretty large scale projects for a number of um, different types of verticals and closets from nonprofits to some of the more highly regulated industries. And what we started to see was a lot of trends around we don't know what we don't know and we know who our traditional audience is, but we're not quite sure how to reach them. Or sometimes uh, we have these great team members, um, but we know that they need to be transitioned in the type of job duties and performance that they're doing. Uh, where do we start and where do we go from here? So at the core of it, EMG is really trying to put a process in place that allows us to answer a lot of those core questions within those three categories. Again, the business, marketing, and technology. Um, and I think we've done that. You know, we've had some really successful engagements coming out of 2010. Uh, there's some new clients, obviously, that we're we're going to be announcing soon for 2011. That they are looking at that simple departmental unit of the strategic consulting division to help answer some of their most uh, pressing questions. Right. And so we are seeing a big shift, but we're not straying away from our our usual project-based relationships, if people still want that, we can still do that. Yeah, but, abs absolutely. I think that we're just continuing to diversify. Many, as um, as many of you know, you know, it was a challenging year last year for many different types of industries and verticals. And so even more so, I think people have hit a benchmark of, um, well, we've done all the projects. We've built the websites. We've developed the marketing plan. Uh, we've executed, um, you know, putting individual analytics into the entire campaign. We've integrated our systems with a good CRM. So. Everybody's at a really nice benchmark, but now it's where do we go from here? Right, that's gotten them so far, but for example, maybe their leaf funnel is thinned out over time, so they need some help replenishing it. That's where we come in. Yeah, sometimes. I mean, it, as it relates to marketing, absolutely. It might be around lead funnel optimization. Um, in one particular case, we were working with an insurance client and trying to understand new audiences that they might want to approach. And that would have been like, you know, in the Asian and multicultural markets. Uh, sometimes it's in the youth market. So a lot of times we're identifying where there's opportunity within the overall marketing funnel. In the case of technology, it could be something completely different. Um, in different institutions, we're finding, you know, they may have 20 or 30 different types of software, hardware systems that are in place um, to allow them to do what they do and they all know that there is optimization and consolidating those practices into a more uniform uh, systematic approach to how they're communicating with their the, not only their clients but in cl communicating internally as well so very very different types of projects where we see ourselves playing a critical role and learning how to first um, really explore what are the options at hand um, 
helping them to go through this ideation process. So now that we've kind of audited and assessed, really coming to the table and helping them to just become better creative thinkers. And then finally with the overall planning. So now that we've kind of gone through those initial stages, what does the planning look like? What is feasible? What are timelines? What is the total amount invested? And what could they possibly see as a return? So that idea of the predictive model becomes really, really important of helping them to really understand that vision of all of this work and everything that has taken place. What does that ultimately look like at a return now that we can begin the project? And in, and in some cases, EMG is still playing that traditional role that we've always played, which is like, OK, post planning, yeah, we can support building it. But in other cases, sometimes we're just managing the sandbox. You know, there's so many players now from technology and hardware vendors to consulting vendors um, to the client itself and the internal resources that they have that many times post that planning period, you're simply helping them to manage their own expectations to get everybody on the same page and get everybody off on the right track. Well, that's exciting changes here for EMG. You know, keep on going on for 2011. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us again. How do you like the new set? I dig it. I think we need to keep it. Our, Hopefully, you guys think it's a keeper. We'll see about that. We'll get more feedback. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.